welcome to our presentation. We're the Democracy and Grassroots team, uh, and we're here to tell you about our journey, our mountain climb towards reaching our final concept. It's a concept that we call Foundation and uh, Working Groups for Social Development. Uh, despite this not being maybe the sexiest, most intriguing name, it is actually a very interesting and important challenge that we're facing. Um, and now that we arrive at the, the peak of our mountain climb, um, this is, we hope to have uh, been able to help bridge some gaps uh, between very important parts of society. Um, yeah, next slide, please. So we got a challenge from Stockholm Stad and the Commission for Socially Sustainable Stockholm. This challenge uh, is to propose strategies and measures to involve and better cooperate with new social grassroots movements in the development of the city of Stockholm. Well, how hard can that be, right? <laughs> uh, not really. <laughs> we felt this was a pretty broad, pretty complex uh, question and that Stockholm Stad also uh, thought so. Uh, so after gaining some initial knowledge about this issue, we thought it would be beneficial for us to reformulate this issue a bit. Uh, so we arrived at our uh, redefined challenge that is, uh, how might we create a platform that supports cooperation and involvement from grassroots movement in the development of Stockholm? And here we wanted to emphasize the cooperation part of this challenge, because uh, we understand this as being, um, the problem being lack of cooperation, lack of um, trust, and uh, um, lack of communication. So we set out to find a game-changing solution that would bridge these gaps between Stockholm Stad and the grassroots movements. Um, as you've heard from the other groups, we've been using a design thinking process. So we've been through these different um, parts or phases, quite a few laps in this uh, circle. Uh, and as you, uh, as you can see and as you heard, the first step is to understand who you are solving for. So that is what we had to do. We had to uh, figure out who are the grassroots movement. And to do that, we had to figure out also what is a grassroots movement. So we uh, talked to different people involved in different sorts of movements, heard their own definitions, drew our own conclusions, and arrived at uh, a definition of our own. So this is what we mean when we talk about a social grassroots movement. Uh, it's a group of people that is mobilized for a common societal or political cause without the aim of making monetary or material profit out of it. Um, they are not registered as a formal organization, so they don't have uh, an organizational number, they don't have a board, and not, and it's not a spokesperson, and they are not bound to political party. Uh, and we have talked to activists involved in several different movements. Uh, many of them are also involved for, in many issues, many movements, a lot of cross-cutting uh, issues. So it's been anything from segregation or racism, uh, urban development, uh, gender equality, sustainability, local democracy, culture, and uh, many other issues. <coughs> Thank you, Ida. Uh, and as Ida just told us, uh, our first step uh, in our working pro process was to get to know our users better. And to be able to do that, we engaged with them and we interviewed uh, people working within Stockholm Star. Uh, we met with uh, people uh, active in different movements to get a deeper understanding of their needs. And it also helped us to um, define uh, our challenge in a more clear way. Uh, so through our interactions, uh, we were able to identify four different personas. Uh, and the persona is a fictional character. 
uh, based on different uh, person's needs and uh, behavior patterns. Um, so it's a way to uh, uh, represent different needs. So I would like to introduce you to our persona. This is uh, Sam. He's a local activist uh, and he needs resources for his community projects. Uh, he is open for financial support from Stockholm Stad, but he would wish for a less uh, bureaucratic and time-consuming system. But his main uh, need is to uh, maintain ownership of his project and the uh, implementation of it. Next, we have uh, Doris. Uh, she's an independent activist. Uh, she started out, um, started a network against racism uh, as a reaction to incidents in her neighborhood. And her main focus is to empower people within uh, the community where she lives. And she wants to stay independent in that work. So independence from uh, governmental institutions is her main uh, need. Uh, next we have uh, Ben. He's an immigrant activist, and he is engaged in several uh, movements and organizations. And he has um, knowledge uh, about the procedure, how to keep in contact and keep a dialogue with Stockholm Star. And his experience is that it has been paid off well for his issues. Uh, his main need is to uh, get recognition for his knowledge, his expertise, and uh, his engagement in these issues. Finally, uh, an important person, persona, uh, is Ingrid. She's a civil servant working within Stockholm Stahl. Uh, and she knows that a better knowledge about the grassroots movements or social movements needs would help her to make a better job. But the dialogue with the movements have been quite difficult and um, it caused a lot of frustration uh, until now. So her basic need is to get tools to better involve with movements in the working process. Yeah. Thank you, Maria. Um, after interviewing these people and uh, keeping their needs in mind, we developed uh, some pro concepts and built up some prototypes. Some of our main con uh, prototypes are mobile community center that is a, a workspace and a meeting space for the Stockholm store and the grassroots movement on the wheel and that can be brought anywhere it's needed. The second is the transporting. Someone from the Stockholm store can be transporting and gather the information about the grassroots movements that builds a better knowledge and better understanding of the grassroots movements and can be proactive. Our third prototype is uh, the walk and talk and it is inspired from the already happening walk and talk in the city. It's like it gathers the people from the different occupation and interest, like from architects, some city planning, and this creates a knowledge about the current uh, needs of the area and uh, creates a common vision between the uh, working groups. The th fourth prototype is a uh, podcast. It's uh, the idea is meant to share the knowledge of uh, people in the working group are uh, with the neighbors and the Stockholm Star too. Our fifth prototype is a debit card. It's like a prepaid debit card uh, where we can uh, individual is offered with the resources for their work, and this eliminates the bureaucracy of the Stockholm Star to gain the resources. Uh, so after having uh, completing these prototypes, we went for some testings with the uh, Stockholm Star and some of members of the grassroots movements. With the feedbacks we received, uh, we, we realized that our prototypes fall into two categories. The first category is like collecting the information uh, about the issues, their consequences, and their solutions. Like the example is like uh, walk and talk and the mobile app. But and the second category of uh, prototypes is like deal with the working process of the issues. Uh, that is like example like uh, transporting. So then we realized that collecting the information is as important as processing the information. So we developed a concept based upon the underlying principles of both the concepts. So we build up the very uh, concept. And I hand over to Peng to uh, explain about the concept. Thank you, Tatika. 
So as we said, there are really two ways to look at the concepts that we come up with. Um, how to get more information and what to do with the information. Um, in our view, and from our research, we really don't need more information because we already have a lot of it. The key is how do we successfully integrate and use the information that we have right now. So I'd like to present our winning concept. It's the Foundation and Working Group for Social Development. Um, it's uh, organization as well as a working style. Um, and I, I know this looks really complicated. Yeah. There's a lot of circles, a lot of arrows, a lot of things going on. So I'll try to walk through this with you uh, step at a time. So the first thing that we like to do, and from the beginning, is that we want to have grassroots movements and stop and stop working together in a single working group. Um, and, or multiple working groups. They need to be overlapping with each other in terms of their, uh, of their work and their knowledge. But this is difficult. How do we do this? Because the city uh, organization, as well as the grassroots movements, they have very different styles, very different knowledge bases, and very different ways to approach things. And sometimes they have conflicting goals as well. So our entire uh, journey up to this point has been to how to get them to overlap like this. So what we propose is we would like to create, uh, so we have Stockholm Stad, we'd like to create an independent organization called the Social Development Foundation. Um, and this is, will, again, be an independent uh, organization. Um, their job is to reach out and, uh, and uh, contact grassroots movements and give them support and resources and help that they need. Now, as you notice, those circles don't overlap. How do, I, how do we get them to interact? Next, please. What we would like to do in the first step is for Stockholm Stad and the Social Development Foundation to work together. And we'd like to Stockholm Stad to fund the Social Development Foundation. Um, they perhaps have people sitting on the board of the foundation as well. Next, we would like to have the grassroots movement integrated into the Social Development Foundation by applying for and receiving what we call social development grants. And these would be like research grants, but it would be for grassroots movements and activists uh, for them to use in their daily lives, when they're working on a project. Um, because they have this information of project giving to the grants, this knowledge will be available to Stockholm Stad, and their civil servants can now really use this information to get in there, that space, that crucial space in between uh, grassroots movements and itself, and create what we like to call a working group. And this working group is very important because it relies on several concepts that we have used, we have used before in previous uh, concepts, including trend spotting. Um, we'd like to have uh, Stockholm Stad be trained in trend spotting to know what the grassroots movements are doing. With the knowledge and the information from the development, we will then have a nice, big, sustainable uh, social sustainability, and that is what we've been working towards. That center area, overlap area there. The people in those areas are grassroots movements people, as well as civil servants, working together to solve the problems that affect them both. Um, the Social Development Foundation gives the grassroots movements the resources to partic participate in work like this, and it gives Stockholm Stad reassurance that the work has been uh, looked over, that people have found it worthwhile, and that it is something important. Next slide, please. So we know that's a bit complicated. We made a small video, short three-minute video, kind of showcasing how this will work. Please enjoy it.
Um, so we hope that clears it up a little bit more. Um, I know it's a very complex concept. There's a lot of moving parts. Um, so please feel free to ask us any questions. Um, uh, if you have any uh, more, uh, require any more information, and we have an exhibition upstairs along with everyone else, please come up. Uh, we hope we make the space clear uh, to explain your questions. But please feel free to ask any now. Thank you very much. We really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you very much for uh, supporting us and the rest of the team as well. So we can take questions now. Mm -hmm. Let's start with you. Uh, uh, quick, 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 quick remark or, or uh, question is that uh, the, the, the real will for for example, stock and start, or in our case, on a commune or stuff, if, if you are like a grassroots person, uh, what is always the, 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 the narrow sector is the funding. And the, 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 the sort of problem I see with this model, this is an excellent model, I think it's like a good thought of having that interface that you can use. But I think, I think still that the will must be sincere from, for example, so Stockholm Star to be ad funding because that's often where it ends. We have a great initiative, please go ahead, do this, it's very nice. Yeah, can we get some funding for this? No, we can't afford it because it's not in our politics, not in our budget. So I would say that's the, that's the critical point with this kind of uh, idea. Funding is needed. Uh, well, we see this as I mean, of course, funding is an issue, uh, but we see this as um, it's still dealing with this sooner rather than later for Stockholm Stad, because there are many issues that evolve that Stockholm Stad, with, like in conflict with grassroots movements, for instance, occupations that we have seen quite a lot during these uh, last months that we've been working with this. Uh, and that would be then a cost later so uh, we are helping Stockholm to be proactive uh, and to deal with the, the problem before it becomes a problem. Thank you, and by the way, great presentation. Yes. What other question I have in the front? Yes. Uh, yeah, I think it's amazing to see how everything just comes together you know, in all the concepts that we've been discussing or, or, or and uh, emphasized that you put them together so it looks like one integrated piece. I think you've done a really nice job with fitting it all together into one solution with the, uh, for example, the transport training, which you can really see the use of, which was an idea that I liked from the start, you know, and, and also with the, uh, the, the, what did you call that, to start with the task force team or the, so I think you've done a great job, uh, and of course, connected to the the point about the the fundings, uh, how much will this cost? <laughs> <laughs> Did you at all sort of think of the, the how? How big should this be? What would be like? Because uh, if you would uh, start a foundation or something like this, it has to be. Um, what would be a, a level <coughs> that would be sort of? Uh, you don't have to say in, in, in exact numbers, but have you? How many movements should be, or how many grants should be distributed in order to make it worthwhile? Well, sorry, I <laughs> don't want to jump in front of anyone here. Um, to answer your question, we actually think that flexibility is one of the major points about this, uh, about this concept. We'd like to leave that um, tactical decision really to the foundation and for the city also to decide. Um, what we've envisioned is 12 major grants a year to start with. Um, that doesn't sound like a lot. Um, of course, you can also scale it up. But the thing about grassroots movement is, like grassroots, they're all connected. And if you reach one member and work with one, you're able to reach out and, and touch and uh, get uh, knowledge and uh, contacts for dozens 
of other people who are also in the same movements that they are. So 12 isn't a large number, and you can always move up to a higher number, 24, 36, whatever. But with every grant, you're getting a dozen people that are in the contact list to be able to work on these working groups. So I think flexibility, first answer, we really leave it up to the foundation to decide. And second, um, even if we start small, the impact could be really large. Last question, Marina. Yeah. Yeah, so I could for presentation. I want to know if you have looked into the legal aspects of using funds in this way, and using um, sort of city money for, for this kind of um, so yeah, we've actually researched into that. Obviously none of us are lawyers, so we can't give you a definitive advice. Don't go to court based on what we're saying. <laughs> Please don't do that. Um, but what we understand is that we cannot give funds to individuals based solely on, their, on, um, on who they are. But the thing about the, 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 the grants um, that needs a little more explanation, hopefully you get it upstairs, is that it's project-based. So you can actually give um, um, funds, just like a research grant, um, to individual people working on a certain project. So we just want to take that concept and twist it a little bit and apply that to uh, grassroots movements and local activists. Um, and it'll just be exactly like a research grant. So the legality is based solely on that. Um, another, and to kind of summarize, it, we know it's a challenge. Um, there are a lot of laws out there and a lot of things that the city can and cannot do. Um, we can't provide a definitive answer now, but what we'd like to do is point a way forward. And I believe that um, if there's a will, there's a way, and we can find some way of working around it to get this vision, even if it's not exactly like this, to come into reality. And also, as we showed you, we had one of our uh, previous concept was about this debit card that would be charged with with money for grassroots movements to use uh, and that was a legal uh, issue about that so we we thought this was a way to to use that idea but put it in a um, in a better framework <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, we have one question there, and then Margarita wants to have the last word. Yeah. I don't have a question. I just want to say uh, you've got a really hard challenge, and <laughs> a tough job. And since I've been following you through this semester, I just want to congratulate you and say this is a fantastic job. I'm I'm really impressed by what you've done, as well as the groups, but especially this. Is Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I will continue that, Lena. Uh, being one of the, uh, representing one of the founding organizations, I'm the vice president of KTH, uh, I want to thank you and thank all of your students showing and living the way of open lab that we wanted once. It's not only about the good solutions you do and the interesting challenges, it is about the way you work, I think. That is really about developing the skill of collaboration, and understanding and integration. And, and uh, so I think it's really wonderful to see this. And I think it's a way of working that please keep it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and get out and change the world <laughs> to a better place. Because this is totally different from many of the, the educations we have. And, and uh, the more of you that exist and do this together, it's, it's, it's really a dream for us. Uh, wanting to get this this uh, thing to happen. Of course, the solutions are great, and and you challenging. Please need it. Please, please use it, and please do something about it. But but use the people and the minds that you have developed. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, grassroots uh, Stockholm Stad, the movement group. Uh, I would like to say thank you, Margareta, for your words in the end. And I would say, as Eva started off by what we're doing this year, really for the first time, is having this gathering in a month from now, where we want really to support students with a smaller scholarship to continue this project in one way or another. So this is really taking uh, our challenge-based uh, 
innovation one step further this year. So we're looking forward to that. And, and please uh, get keep in contact with us for, for that. Uh, okay, sir. Great. Thank so, you. time for exhibition.